These are the only builds you'll ever need for Legend Onslaught or Onslaught in general. I'm going to go over all three classes and the best builds, the build I use, why I use them, and why it's going to make Onslaught a breeze for you. But before we get into these specific builds, if you just want to use the builds right away, they are in the description with the dim links, meaning you could click the link and just apply that entire build to your character for the Titan, Hunter, or Warlock and save you a ton of time. If you are going to use any of these builds or this video helps you, consider subscribing. It is much appreciated. We're approaching 100 k it would be awesome to get there but let's get right into these builds starting off with my absolute favorite and the one that's going to carry these teams especially if your teammates seem like they're dying a lot the warlock what i like to run on the warlock is the phoenix protocol exotic chest piece which is special because of its exotic armor perk battle hearth where any kills or assists inside your well turn straight into more super energy now these did get nerfed a long time ago along with orpheus rigs and any super genning exotic but basically after like two or three kills in your well you'll already beat a 50 percent super and then just normal damaging kills will get it back right away using this i was able to have a well every single wave and sometimes multiple times if it was a boss boss wave seriously seriously slept on i paired this with sunshot but it really depends on the map you're on i use sunshot on all three maps though it is an insanely insanely good exotic especially on warlock because of how well it pairs with your subclass and plus hand cannon's got a buff and sunshot was already such a beast to go into the subclass obviously icarus dash for movement obviously solar grenade and incinerator snap and then touch of flame to boost your solar grenade now for the fragments i used ember of searing for when any of my sword kills die they create a fire sprite and remember fire sprites give you grenade energy so it's just a chain and then rapidly defeating enemy with solar ignitions which is almost every single one of your kills on this build it's going to generate orbs of power boom more supers for you boom more supers for your team and then ember of mercy so you get restoration when you revive your teammate and picking up your fire sprites that you're generating from ember of searing will give you even more restoration and then obviously ember of ashes just to apply more scorch stacks this makes it so when you use your incinerator snap and shoot a few sun shots or throw your solar grenade they're going to start exploding and it results in a ton of damage to bosses and huge pools of enemies now the other things are little bit optional but i pair this with an apex predator because your warlock in my opinion shouldn't be on galahorn and rockets are extremely extremely meta for this mode and then for the primary i switch between two i like using riptide but if you're one of your teammates is already using a chill clip fusion or a chill clip grenade launcher honestly i like switching to succession succession saves a ton of time with the tormentors because of the precision damage and a lot of people sleep on that in my opinion for the rest of the little perks on my armor you can refer to the build but it's pretty much just basic stuff to help the rest of the build like solar weapon surge and things like that that is it for the warlock and if you want to use that it's in the top of the description now to get into the beautiful beautiful titan this is going to be your insane damage one hit champions chunked down the bosses and just all around kill everything which is why we bring our beautiful syntoseps syntoseps with their exotic perk biotic enhancements where if you're surrounded which means two or more enemies close to you it's a pretty generous distance it's around 12 meters i think you gain increased melee and super damage well guess what we're pairing this with berserker titan which means your super is melee damage and you're always meleeing as a part of the build which is why we're also pairing this with any one two punch shotgun i prefer the wastelander m5 because i can pair that with sunshot and apex predator rather than using something like without remorse where i can't use sunshot to go into our aspects we're running into the fray we're destroying a tangler casting super grants woven mail for nearby allies and while you have woven mail your melee regeneration rate is increased pairing that with banner of war which means any finisher sword or melee attack gives us a banner which gives us periodic healing and increased melee damage all the time very very good using grapple just to get around and to pair with our melees because you can use grapple melee for a ton of damage as well and then obviously frenzied blade is our only choice for the aspects we're running continuity so our suspended enemies last longer wisdom so we can get orbs of power off our suspended enemies and here's the kicker warding so the suspended enemies that we kill that generate an orb of power give us woven mail and then threat of fury so the tangles we get from killing our suspended enemies if we throw them at an enemy we get melee energy back for damaging them with a tangle this build pairs into itself insanely good and that's why we're using it so basically the idea of the build is you just run around meleeing buck wild Use your Wastelander for bigger enemies where you need a one-two punch like barriers, bosses, and things like that. Use your Sunshot for mass ad clear and your Rocket for far away bosses or if you don't have your super or energy. This is by far my favorite one and probably the most powerful one in this video. Remember if you want to use this, it's in the description. Our beautiful, beautiful Hunter, which is going to speed these waves up significantly for us. Yes, that's what your Hunter is for. It's going to boost all of your damage. Make sure you guys have your super and make the enemies go down insanely fast. So if you want to be the guy who's speeding it up and helping your team, this is the build you're going to want to run. You're going to shape 
minutes off your runs. Why? Because Orpheus Rig. Orpheus Rig's exotic armor perk, Uncanny Arrows, provides ability energy for each tethered target by deadfall anchors. Basically, it's the boots version of your warlock exotic, meaning for every enemy you tether, you're going to get super energy up to 50%, and the other 50% will come pretty much from just killing all the enemies you tethered because there's so many enemies in this game mode. And then obviously, in my opinion, your hunter should always be your Galahorn. So I have Galahorn on a Riptide Fusion with Chill Clip, but you could change that out for a shotgun if you really wanted. And then I personally have been using Gnawing Hunger because of the auto rifle buff plus for overload champions. This thing has been a beast, but you could really use whatever you want here. You could switch to Forbearance and then have a Kinetic Primary of some sort. It really doesn't matter for the weapons here besides Galahorn. To go into the Night Stalker, what exactly I was running is most importantly Vortex Grenade, Finishing Step to go invisible when you dodge, Stylish Executioner. For any time we finish a weakened Suppressor Volatile Enemy, we get invisible ability, Echo of Remnants for longer duration of our grenade, Echo of Leeching for melee kills to get us health regen, Echo of Insatiability for our grenades will get us volatile rounds with start pack which will start proccing our stylish finisher. And then Echo of Expulsion for any enemies killed by void abilities will explode. This counts as your super and your grenade, which just pairs really well into your shadow shot deadfall, which is what you're gonna wanna run. Once again, if you wanna use this build, it is in the description. And that is all three of the best onslaught builds in the game, guys. Seriously, seriously, do not sleep on these. You guys' support lately has been super, super appreciated. I know I don't often do build videos, but I really enjoy making videos and I haven't been as much lately. So I'm just trying to keep posting and stay consistent. And I really appreciate all of the support. With that being said, have fun playing Destiny 2 Into the Light. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.